Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today attended the second day of the Gateway Golf Forum held at Bahrain Bay. During the forum, His Royal Highness the Deputy King welcomed the range of project announcements made during the forum, which include significant investment opportunities across the energy, real estate, infrastructure, ICT and technology sectors. His Royal Highness highlighted that these projects demonstrate Bahrain's strategy to increase the private sector's role in driving economic growth while supporting greater innovation and competitiveness. His Royal Highness affirmed that the depth and capacity of knowledge within Team Bahrain is driving forward a shared vision to deliver meaningful opportunities for the Kingdom's citizens. His Royal Highness concluded by thanking the delegates and speakers who attended the inaugural Gateway Golf Forum and emphasised the Forum's role in showcasing projects that are supporting growth and prosperity in the region. Gateway Golf brings together over 500 global investors and business leaders to explore ways of unlocking the opportunities being created by the economic transformation in the GCC. The event provides a direct route into accessing the GCC market by showcasing major regional investment-ready projects worth over, one, over 18 million US dollars while offering an opportunity to match funding with large-scale infrastructure projects in Bahrain. Gateway Gulf Investment Forum was able to achieve its purpose to meet foreign direct investors who are interested in accessing the GCC market. 
The event gathered top global investors and CEOs to explore the Gulf opportunity and present the investment projects in a range of sectors. The Gateway Gulf had been a golden opportunity for us in the government sector to interact with the private sector with a number of, of uh, investors who showed interest in, a num in participating in, uh, in impl the implementation of a number of infrastructure projects, especially in, in, in our field, uh, in roads sector and sanitary sectors and other sectors as well. The forum included in-depth discussions on what governments are trying to achieve in relation to what investors need, the development of human capital, the impact of technology, in addition to development projects. For us at the Ministry of Transportation, this forum couldn't have come at a better time. We have several strategic projects that the Ministry is now embarking on. Um, one of our most critical projects is the light rail projects for which we are looking at private sector involvement. All of the strategic projects right now, the, the government's um, direction and vision for 2030 is that the private sector becomes the catalyst and the dynamo for change in the national economy. On its second and last day, the event attracted the attention of many investors who are keen to expand cooperation with the Kingdom and the rest of the GCC countries, leaving them with good impression and happy about the event's outcomes. Oh, you don't, you don't see these events in, in, in purely terms of how many contracts were signed, how many deals were done. That's not what this is about. This is about relationship building. This is about setting a tone for the GCC, creating an environment where external investors and those within the region can discuss what needs to be done in the relationship between government and private sector. Expectations are that we fulfil the expectations of our visitors and our investors. Um, it's that we give them a platform in which that they can um, have conversations about how easy it is to do business, the opportunities to do business um, both in Bahrain and across the GCC. The event has been really of uh, a lot of value adding for uh, um, the Gulf area in, in general and for investors who whether are thinking of coming into uh, Bahrain or the GCC area, our opportunities that uh, why we grew in, uh, in Bahrain, what are the areas that we have been uh, seeing as uh, attractive for our uh, existence in Bahrain. The region's economy is growing and opportunities that used to be closed are opening up to investors like never before. The forum continued today, discussing more investment opportunities and agreements, as well as forming bonds and partnerships with various countries around the world. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. The first Gateway Gulf Forum in the region concluded today with great success, gathering over 500 international investors and business leaders to Bahrain to explore how to unlock the exciting opportunities opening up in the GCC as a consequence of its rapid economic transformation. The comments we received what, uh, were very positive, uh, especially on the, uh, the outright discussions that took place, uh, the forthcoming discussions, uh, very candid, very open, uh, different opinions, uh, excellent dialogue. Uh, the results were, were really good and I'm confident that we'll see projects materializing out of this conference. Over the last two days, we have, and certainly in my interactions with investors, they have been impressed at the new uh, paradigm here in the in the Gulf. And they've been impressed with Bahrain. I think that was the us hosting this event is while we are talking and welcoming all of our GCC brothers, the fact that it's taking in Bahrain is showing Bahrain uh, in, in a new light to investors who have not visited this country before. Throughout the forum, Bahrain has sent a clear message. It aims to support businesses through a cohesive, responsive Team Bahrain approach that brings together key players across government and the private sector to facilitate the growth of new and established investors, moreover new sectors emerging in the region. Exciting opportunity because we see that in the GCC things are opening up. There's a big uh, paradigm shift in the region and uh, we as a private equity firm that works in a global platform, this is a very exciting opportunity for us. I think there's too much opportunity here and the people are willing to engage and cooperate with us. Uh, when I was before I was coming here, I was a little nervous because of the different system 
the regulation, but they are very flexible here. We have a lot of investors back home in U.S. who is looking to invest into the GCC, and as the name of the conference is the gateway towards uh, GCC. So we have seen, you know, yesterday the invest in Saudi today with Oman and Kuwait. So you know, it's a great uh, forum to be here. It wasn't only a great platform for business networking, but also provided very beneficial sessions by unique speakers from different backgrounds and specialties. ADB managed to bring very high calibers, but very importantly, people who had something to say. You know, not politicians, not CEOs who, who just talk in general. They were very specific topics with professionals, a lot of debate. A lot of tough questions. I found Bahrain very forward thinking. I come from a particularly nascent industry, which is digital currencies, cryptocurrencies, and Bitcoin. The EDB, uh, in particular, um, has been um, incredible to work with as far as you know, guiding us to very um, specific individuals um, within Bahrain that we can um, talk to that are relevant to us. So it's been um, uh, it's been one of the better events that I've been to um, in my life. The forum established new ways of cooperation to drive regional and global growth. Investors are here from all over the world to witness the Gulf's exciting economic transformation here in the Gateway Gulf Forum that ends today but kickstarts many investments and projects. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdelbafour. His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to Malaysia's Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad on his re-election as Prime Minister. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister wished his Malaysian counterpart to bring to his country more progress and prosperity. He highlighted Bahrain's keenness to further strengthen bilateral relations and cooperation in the interest of the two countries and their people. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee and Bahrain Royal Endurance Team Captain, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, led the Royal Endurance Team in the International Royal Windsor Horse Show, participating in the 120km and 80km endurance race that will take place at Windsor Castle Park in London on Friday. His Highness affirmed the depth of relations between Bahrain and Britain highlighting that they are based on cooperation and partnership and common interests. He also stressed both leadership's keenness on strengthening relations and coordinate stances regarding various affairs. He noted that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland are both passionate about horses and stressed the Kingdom's keenness to establish endurance race at the Royal Windsor Horse Show, which is considered one of the most important international horse festivals. His Highness added that the Royal Endurance Team is keen on participating in the race to achieve honouring results, which reflects the development of the sport in Bahrain. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed confidence in the Royal Team to perform their best in the race. His Highness Sheikh Nasser had led the Royal Endurance Team in the last training before participating in the endurance race. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, designated his advisor, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to attend a ceremony held at the Diplomat Hotel yesterday evening and hosted by the Russian ambassador to the Bahrain, Vijay Karif, marking his country's national day in the presence of a number of senior officials and members of the diplomatic corps accredited in Bahrain, as well as a number of guests. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa conveyed the greetings and congratulations of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the Russian leadership and people and his wishes to Russia of further progress and prosperity. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa hit the relations between Bahrain and Russia and the development they witness in various fields, affirming the keenness of Bahrain on advancing cooperation with Russia through activating joint agreements and memorandums of cooperation to achieve the aspirations of the two countries and their peoples. For his part, the Russian ambassador to Bahrain expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his keenness on supporting cooperation between the two countries, affirming the keenness of his country to bolster cooperation and partnership with Bahrain for the interest of the two peoples.
The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended today the 33rd Commander's Graduation Ceremony, which included a number of officers and military students and members of the Ministry of Interior and the National Guard. Upon arrival, the Minister of Interior was received by the Southern Governor, the Chief of Public Security and the Acting Commander of the Special Security Force. The Interior Minister thanked His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for their support to the Ministry to improve police efficiency. He highlighted the importance to continue the development process to tackle security challenges with readiness and precision. The Acting Commander of the Special Security Force praised, in a speech, the directives and constant support of the Minister of Interior. He said the trainees had received advanced police training and acquired security skills to enable them to perform their duties competently and professionally. Later, the graduates displayed practical skills that showed the high level of their efficiency, embodying the training they had received as well as the readiness and willingness to perform their duties. The Minister of Interior congratulated the graduates and honoured the top achievers, praising their excellent results and wishing them success in serving their country. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, patronised the ceremony, honouring the leader and members of the police music band. The ceremony was held in appreciation of the efforts and performance of the band in all national occasions and events, as well as international festivals. The Minister of Interior expressed thanks and appreciation to the band leader, Major General Mubarak Najm, and all the band members, affirming that the band has embodied the concepts of patriotism and reflected Bahraini heritage through its national participations. Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah hailed the march for the band throughout the years and its commitment to embody community partnership. The Minister commended the efforts of Major General Mubarak Najm to enhance the band's training and development, noting that the military marches that he had composed will be commemorated. He added that the band's leader's role had extended to developing Bahraini music and maintaining its genuineness by using modern instruments and techniques. Lieutenant General Rashid bin Abdullah asserted the importance of allocating a day a year to celebrate the police music band. For his part, the band leader delivered a speech in which he expressed appreciation to the Minister of Interior, stating that the band has been keen on achieving success and excellence, highlighting the factors of success the band members possess. Major General Mubarak Najim gave a briefing on the history of the band and its march of progress, as well as a musical performance depicting the development of the national anthem since the early 40s of the last century. The ceremony included a documentary on the police music band, highlighting the support of the Minister of Interior during its leading artistic march and enhancing its presence in international events and festivals, noting Bahrain's keenness on developing art, creativity and patriotism. The Minister of Interior honoured the officers and members of the Police Music Band 
and witnessed a performance they gave. The Minister of Education, Dr Majid bin Ali al-Noemi, delivered a speech during his participation in the 24th edition of the Arab League Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organisation, Alexo Conference, held in Tunisia. The Minister affirmed that Bahrain has paid special attention to education since the beginning of the previous century, which contributed to making honourable achievements for the Kingdom. He invited Alexo affiliates and the Arab Ministers of Education to participate in the centennial celebration of formal education in Bahrain, marking the beginning of the upgrade and enlightenment stage. The Minister also highlighted the outcomes of the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of information and telecommunication technology in education. He urged the organisation to benefit from the Regional Centre for Information and Communication Technology in Bahrain to hold courses, workshops and specialised seminars, as well as other vital programmes listed in the strategy. The Electricity and Water Affairs Minister, Dr Abdul Hussein bin Ali Musa, affirmed that in accordance to the care of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, provides to renewable energy and within the initiatives of the National Renewable Energy Plan, which is being pursued by the Coordinating Committee under the chairmanship of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the Kingdom aims to produce 250 megawatts through renewable energy sources by 2025, which provides a promising sector for investment in renewable energy in its various recourses in partnership with the private sector. In this regard, the Minister said that this grant project to produce solar energy in Bahrain, which is 100 megawatt central station in the south of the Kingdom. The Minister also said that the early operation of the second phase of the Aldo station will be in June 2020, where 800 megawatts will initially be provided to reach 1,500 megawatts and produce 25 million gallons of drinking water per day through the reverse osmosis method. The Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Isam bin Abdullah Khalif, and the Minister of Housing, Engineer Basim bin Yaqub al Hama, commended the visit of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, to a number of locations in the Hid area, including East Hid. Minister Khalaf noted the Premier's keenness to follow up on the citizens' needs and for services and projects. He also hailed His Royal Highness's efforts to develop the infrastructure of the Kingdom's villages and cities. Minister Khalaf stated that the Ministry has directed the speedy implementation of His Royal Highness's directives. For his part, the Minister of Housing affirmed that the visit of the Prime Minister reflects his keenness on following up on the developments of the strategic East Hid project, which started in 2012 with the support of the Government, led by His Royal Highness Prime Minister Ali, Minister Ali Hammer, reviewed the phases of the project during the visit of His Royal Highness adding the East Hid project provides 4,500 housing units, out of which 2,132 have been constructed. The Survey and Land Registration Bureau announced the plan to launch the new generation of 3D maps of the Kingdom of Bahrain, in line with future innovations in vehicle and driving technology. The new project was announced as part of the Gateway Gulf Forum, which is being held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Survey Director General Engineer Naji Sept said that these high quality maps will provide a direct update of 3D imagery of all roads and surrounding infrastructure, which will play an important role in supporting the growth of future projects in the public and private sectors related to road maintenance, security, safety, urban planning coastal services and public transport. The new project comes as part of the government's ongoing efforts to employ modern technologies in the development of services in support of entrepreneurship and innovation and promoting economic diversification. The Director General added that the next phase of the project will target partnerships with international companies specialising in the design and implementation of such projects. 
The United Nations delegation, representing the Division for Sustainable Development Goals and the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, stressed that the government of Bahrain has made great progress in implementing the Sustainable Development Agenda 2030. During the five-day visit to Bahrain, the delegation received a positive response from authorities concerned and was closely briefed on Bahrain's successful experiences and projects, which have made it a role model for many countries of the world, which will contribute to the success of the preparation process for the voluntary national report to be submitted by the Kingdom to the United Nations in the upcoming July. The Director of Sustainable Development in Economic and Social Affairs in the UN United Nations, UNDESA, DSDG, expressed our thanks and appreciation to the Government of the Kingdom of Bahrain for its warm welcome and cooperation in achieving the goals of Sustainable Development 2030. She noted that Bahrain has many initiatives and successful practices to achieve these goals. She expressed her confidence in the efforts exerted by the Government of Bahrain, which can serve as a role model for many countries in the world, and successful initiatives in various fields, such as the rights of equality and housing, the Empowerment Fund Tamkeen and other experiences that the designation has seen and which have a high degree of quality. For his part, United Resident Coordinator UNDP, Mr Amin al Shakawi, stressed that the visit paid by the UN delegation representing the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs and Division of Sustainable Development Goals, UNDESA, DSDG, is aimed at mutual consultation with regards to the preparation of the Bahrain Voluntary Report on the implementation of Sustainable Development Goals. After being in the country for four days and speaking with various government departments and um, agencies and banks and so on around the implementation of the agenda, it's clear to us that Bahrain is extremely committed to um, achieving the agenda. Um, I think that there have been a range of issues, a range of initiatives that have been taken that have been immensely useful. Um, Tamkeen is a good example of the kinds of initiatives that have been taken. I think that there are extremely good practices in Bahrain. Bahrain is certainly um, extremely well situated. I think it's a very good country. I was very, very gratified by the efforts that have been made. Um, I think that countries um, all over the world have challenges. There are very many good practices that Bahrain can offer the rest of the world. Uh, initi uh, initiatives related to gender equality, as we said, initiatives related to housing, initiatives related to, to the labour market. They certainly are very um, up there. And I think that in terms of the voluntary national review of Bahrain, um, that would be something that countries would find, other countries in the world would find really useful in terms of looking at the Bahraini VNR. The General Directorate of Traffic, the GDT, today announced a new pipeline project to introduce a blockchain-based vehicle registry system in the Kingdom of Bahrain. In line with the government's aim to provide world-class services and complementing recent advancements in regulating the vehicle industry, GDT is seeking a technical partner to design and implement the blockchain vehicle registry system. The announcement came on the sidelines of the Gateway Golf Forum, which is being held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, the EDB, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. GDT Director General Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Abdul Wahab Al Khalifa said that the registry will be a vital advancement in reducing the overall cost of maintaining critical vehicle information after greater efficiency in terms of supply chain management and ensure a high level of transparency for all stakeholders in the vehicle registration ecosystem. This blockchain vehicle registry system forms one part of a project pipeline aimed at building on recent advances in technology to further enhance service delivery and facilitate private sector-led opportunities.